All right, so today we're going to continue talking about prepping for linoleum or relief at home. So the first thing that you'll need to come up with is your image. And hopefully by this time you've seen that image making slideshow. But if not, check your emails, check Blackboard. It should be on there. So I just have a little drawing of a hamburger. That's what I'm going to choose to work on for this demo. And then here I have my linoleum plate so we can see how it's going to fit on there. Right now, it is just a line drawing. So I am planning out a couple of things. And so one thing you can do when you first get started is making sure that you're drawing on something that's the right size for your image and or for your block. And so sometimes if you want what I like to do is to take my plate itself and then trace it to just a standing piece of paper. Um, and if you're feeling brave, you can go ahead and work on this piece of paper. Um, but if you have tracing paper, this is one of those moments where you'll want to utilize that tracing paper. So this is a sheet of tracing paper and I've done my drawing on it. And I'm just making sure that it fits. Alternatively, I can keep that block right there and actually draw on top of my tracing paper, creating what I think my image would have been. Right? So I'm just going to do a, a soda to go with this hamburger, but I don't actually plan on printing this one. Um, but just showing you that if I have my plate size already drawn, when I'm working on my image, I'll be able to see where everything is. And so if we look at this image that I'm working on, for me, the straw is getting maybe a little bit too close to the top. As long as I have that block on a separate sheet of paper, I can move this image down and still know where my block ends, right? My block is ending there and I still get to use the actual linoleum to reference where my image is going to go. <clears throat> um, the next thing we want to think about is you have your line drawing. So that's this one here. I'm just going to go ahead and fold that one up and rip it off. Because um, I don't truly need it. But just showing you, if you were to do, um, if you didn't have your drawing already planned, or even if you do have your drawing plan, using this little layout will help you keep your composition and check your composition. So if we look at where it is here, maybe it's a little too close, maybe it's a little too far. I can play around with it because I know where my block is. I know the size of my block. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna try to just compose it right in the middle. <clears throat> All right, so we have our hamburger drawing. It's a line drawing, but if you think about linoleum itself, it's a block printing process or relief printing. And one thing that's really prominent within relief prints are flat blocks or flat shapes of color. Um, if you try to work a line drawing specifically just on the linoleum, you'll end up having to carve out so much information or carve out so much of the block just to get something that kind of does the job of a dry point. That's not really utilizing linoleum for what it's known for. So even though I like this line drawing, it's a hamburger, who wouldn't like it? Um, even though I could make this line drawing exactly onto this plate and then carve out all this material, right? Everything that's not the line if I'm going with the black line approach. Again, if you don't know what I'm saying, refer to that slideshow. <clears throat> It'd be better for me to utilize some of the flat blocks of shape that linoleum is known for. So in this drawing, I have it here. Um, I see that the line drawing is there, but I think that I want to make this all one big 
black shape, right? So I don't have to carve out this whole area. I just need to leave it alone. Um, and then I'll be more clever and right. I have this shadow that I can put in. So now I don't have to carve out this huge chunk, but this huge chunk, I will have to carve out. Um, and then the little details in here. The other shape I'm going to add is this hamburger patty. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. And I don't want you to think about how the pencil shades, right? If I go in this corner here and actually shade it, that's not how it's gonna translate, right, into this. Because you're carving out all of these things. So even if you want to do a gradient like this, you'll need to change the way you draw it. You should think more so about pen and ink versus what you can do with a pencil. But we'll go into that in a further video. For now, I'm just helping get the image ready for what is about to happen. All right, so I have the image. I've planned out some block shapes, some big flat shapes, and then some line drawing here. As you know, linoleum is not right reading. What that means is that when you print this block, if I were to draw my name on this block, right, when I print it, it's actually gonna print reverse and backwards. And so, we want to keep that in mind when we're making our image. That is to say, if I want my image to look this way, this orientation, when I print it, I'll need to carve it backwards or reversed on this plate. <clears throat> if you're using words, it matters a whole lot more than if you're using imagery, right? So if I see my image like this, Nothing really changes. The light source is coming from the right now instead of the left, but it doesn't change my image. For this one, that's my name. So if I print it reversed, it's not going to read Brian. It'll read something else that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. So you'll need to keep that in mind when you're transferring your image. Um, I'm going to clean this plate off just a little bit and then we'll go to transferring our image. All right, so the plate is clean again. Let's talk about transferring our image. So again, it's not a right reading process. So before you ever transfer, you'll need to rotate or reverse or mirror the image for the transfer. <clears throat> In this case, I have my drawing. If I'm able to transfer it this way, it'll be reversed. And if we were in the press room, we could take our image just as it is and run this whole thing through the press. The pressure from the press will push the graphite and allow it to transfer. Um, but in the situation where we're not there, right, and you have to do this at home, you'll need to come up with another method, and I'll show you one. The first one you can try is you can try to copy the amount of pressure that a press would have had. So I have my graphite on this side. If I flip it over and push down hard enough, I might get it to transfer. And so for that, you could use anything you might have around the house. Um, this is one of my metal clay to tools. Um, if I push down, maybe I can get it to transfer. Pushing down pretty hard on there. And I'm a peak on the other side. And so you see just that corner started to transfer. So if you have any sharp not even sharp, they just need to be a rounded metal tool. So this is just a metal burnishing tool that I have for ceramics. But the other thing that you might more readily have um, in your kitchen is a spoon, right? So 
we can try to use this spoon to do the transfer. And since we're getting a little bit further into this, I need to pay attention to where everything is going. So I'm actually gonna start to prep my drawing itself because this transfer method is going to work um, or has a high possibility of working. So I'm going to get some more equipment as I prepare for this transfer. All right. So as you're moving closer and closer to whatever your preferred transfer technique is, it is always good to have some tape near you especially if you're trying to get it in the exact space. So I'm just gonna take a piece of tape or blue painter's tape and I'm putting it on the plate halfway and then the drawing itself. <clears throat> and the reason I'm doing this is just to have a version of a hinge that I can look up and see if my drawing is transferring well and then put it back down and it's still in the exact same place. So taking that spoon, little pressure on the front end, get the rounded part. And you're just gonna push down really hard. So the video might shake a little bit, but that's just showing you how much pressure you're actually going to need. And then we'll see what's transferring. So it's transferring a little bit. It's a little light for me, so I'm gonna push a little bit harder. It's transferring a lot darker now and it might take you multiple times to get this correct um, and depending on how intense your drawing is <clears throat> it might take you a while to get all the clarity to come through that's with a spoon even if you have the linoleum carving tool already this little rounded edge could help so pressure down. And pushing, we're getting it to transfer. And then with this method, you're just taking your drawing, flipping it over and getting it to transfer almost immediately without even having to reverse it yourself, right? You just have to flip it over and it's already reversed. And then when we print it, it flips back and you're ready to go. I like the clarity of this one. It's a little bit sh smaller and more precise. So I'm just gonna keep using it. So big areas that you know you're going to like leave alone or you're not gonna have to carve out. I usually just do the outline when I transfer it and then I'll mark it with an X on the actual block. That just reminds me that it needs to be cut or not cut depending on which way you want to define it. Um, oftentimes for me, um, X means don't cut it, uh, but you could decide that X means cut for you. Or you can mark it with any other symbol which helps you remember to or not to cut an area. All right, almost there. Forgot this corner. Now, after you've been printmaking for a while, you might forego doing steps like this. I always like to have a drawing that's ready to go and that way I know what I need to work on. I'm paying attention to it early. But some people choose to freehand right on the plate. Um, and that's the other option for you all is you can skip the whole transfer and freehand on the plate. Just make sure that whatever you choose to do, the orientation doesn't matter, right? So if it's, again, a not, this is not a right reading process. So like I drew my name, if I decided to do that, I know it's gonna print backwards. And there's this thing that happens when people print letters accidentally backwards. They'll try to sell you on it. They'll try to tell you that they did that on purpose. Very, very rarely 
has somebody decided to make an image appear backwards. So, um, but just an example of freehanding on the plate, right? I'm just gonna draw a little, maybe they're french fries. I mean, there's nothing, nothing crazy or superiorly unique about this. This is more natural to people who are drawers. Um, if you happen to not be a drawer, you can also just take an image you like. And I'm just going to pull one from around me. So if you happen to not be a drawer, the other way of doing this is to just find an image that you like and copy that using tracing paper. Again, if you don't have tracing paper, there's other ways that you can do this uh, using the light of your windows as a sort of makeshift light box is an option. I'm just using this book that I have by James Jean. It's one of my favorite artists. Um, I'm just going to find an image that I like. And this, this, other than this, I mean, other than doing this tracing, the process of transferring is the same. The other thing I will mention is that if you choose to do this version where I press the graphite onto the block using a burnishing method, you'll want to use one of your softer pencils. So 2B, 4B, 6B, all of those numbers are better than using the H's. Um, and if you find yourself lacking, don't you don't have those supplies, then you can do just your standard pencil, which is a 2HB, as long as you're not using your H's. If you absolutely only have H's, you can use those too but you'll just need to make sure that you load up heavily on the line, right? So getting a lot of graphite down onto the drawing, um, but not with pressure, but with frequency. So rather than pushing down really hard, you'll go over it a couple of times with the H um, to get it to transfer. Even if you do use an H, it just might mean you have to push down a lot harder than you would if you had a B pencil. So this is a 2H, a, a very dirty, waxy 2H. Um, but we'll see if I can put it down enough pressure to get it to transfer. Again, I would put my tape hinge there, but this is just an example of if I can get my 2H to transfer. Yeah, so it's transferring a little bit there. I would just have to go over it a couple of times, but I don't know if you can tell, but in the drawing, it's already become so much lighter from, lighter from one go that I don't know it'll get much darker than that. Um, and lastly, the other method that you can use, so I'm going to take this drawing again. I can basically make a um, carbon sheet using pastels. So these are some dry pastels that I have, some chalk pastels. Um, so I would just make a separate sheet of carbon paper. And all I need to do is so I'm making a completely separate sheet of carbon paper. So rather than doing this on the back of your paper, I'm just going to make a separate sheet. 
Again, I'm using tracing paper because I have it on hand and it's generally very helpful, but you can also do this on standard printer paper, old takeout menus, whatever you have access to. So I have a nice dusting of red. I'm gonna lay that down. So with the chalk pastel touching the lino block, I'm going to take this, my drawing, making sure it's the right orientation. Actually, I'm going to use this sheet just so we know that it's a new image rather than an old. And right down at the bottom, doesn't matter where you're going to tape it, but I'm going to choose to tape it at the bottom. That way I get both sheets, the carbon paper and the tracing and the linoleum all together on a hinge. And then you have your image, you have it facing the way that you want it to go. And for this, I usually use a pen and it's not because I want ink to show up. It's just because it's a nice hard metal tip and that's gonna allow the transfer to be a lot more precise than if I used a softer pencil. The other thing I like about the pen is that if it has ink and it's not dry like this one is, you'll have evidence of lines that you've already traced because it'll go from pencil to pen. All right. And then we see it there. So there's this little red sheep in there. And that's your other transfer method. So we went over all the methods. There's more methods. Um, if you have access to a printer, if you have access to mineral spirits, this is the more caustic transfer um, or paint thinner. You can take that toner transfer print or that printed paper, coat it in um, mineral spirits or paint thinner, and then using heat or pressure, you can get it to transfer. But Again, it's a very caustic way to go about it. And if you don't have proper ventilation in your house and things like that, I wouldn't choose that way. I would choose any of these ways where you literally just need paper, pencil, and a spoon um, or any other thing that can burnish. Once we've gotten it transferred, the last thing that we need to do, and again, I mentioned this in the slideshow, is that if I have this really thin line here for my drawing, I'm gonna be tempted to try to carve everything around the line. If you're doing the black line approach, if you're doing the white line approach, even carving a line that thin with tools that you might've borrowed or the tools you might have at home, it's gonna be really intense. And so we always say that once you've transferred your pencil, your drawing, go over it with the broad tip or standard tip Sharpie and that's gonna make that line a lot bolder. And that's good for seeing, but also it's gonna make it bigger so it'll be easier to carve around. Again, all I'm doing is going over the drawing that I have to get it to be thicker. And that way I won't be frustrated with the qualities of linoleum. Because linoleum is much different than dry point processes that we have done or etching processes that we have done, um, which means that it's a bolder line more often than it is a very thin, delicate line. Most designers, graphic or um, illustration oriented students that use computer programs, specifically vectors, will find them, themselves like usually more drawn to this process than to the dry point processes, which is a lot better or more akin to drawers than it is to people who are used to vectors. And 
lastly, sometimes when you rotate an image or reverse it, you get to see that like the thing you thought was centered wasn't as centered as it should be. So I'm kind of correcting some of that now. And that's as simple as that. Um, making a mark or two here telling me not to carve this out. Don't carve that shape out. Um, and I also don't want to carve that part out. So just making a little mark to indicate that those should be left alone. This part is going to all be carved out. And that's it. So again, to transfer, you need a paper. You need a softer pencil, 2B, or all the way up to whatever B you might have. But if you don't have those, a standard HB will work. Just require a little bit more pressure. Um, and then you need your block. So pencil, tracing paper, your block, also a metal spoon or any other thing that you can use for burnishing. Those are my tools and that's it.